Hello, hello again, and uh, welcome to another tutorial. And uh, I will continue with uh, working with my uh, AFS Nikkor 24 to 70 millimeter, uh, and it's a 2.8 G and ED uh, lens. And uh, the problem is, it has some. Um, uh, a kind of uh, focus hunting, uh, so it it's not that uh, correct and 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 safe in the focusing. So uh, I want to just discover and uh, maybe find uh, if it's the uh, dirty magnetic encoder tape um, or the GMR head. Uh, that is, it works like a tape recorder with the information on the magnetic encoder tape and uh, the tape, uh, the head is actually, what do you say, <laughs> just like a tape recorder uh, play the sound uh, that is the information on a tape so yeah, I think it's the explanation is okay <coughs> But uh, let's have a look inside and uh, see what possibly can be done. I do not need to disassemble very much and uh, everything will actually happen from in this area here. So the only thing, the only thing I need to do is uh, need to take off the mount. I mean the back, the fifth lens group, which is the back lens group, um, and the uh, contact uh, with the camera. Take care of, I mean, take really good care when uh, when take off the mount here. Do not uh, damage the um, the flexible cable. Well, so um, it can. Maybe you can get it on the internet as a spare part. Now, first things is to do is take off the um, the rubber uh, grip on the uh, zoom ring. So I just need a a dentist tool here to uh, because it's very much easier. One can also do a soft uh, screwdriver. I mean. If it's not too sharp and pointy on the end, but this tool is absolutely amazing to work with different photo equipment. Now the uh, the lid here we need to also take off. I mean, just one side. Uh, so it comes off, <coughs> and then um, also in this case I use a. JIS crosshead screwdriver and it should be JIS because a Phillips screwdriver will damage probably damage the screws. Now uh, before taking it out the, the zoom <coughs> brush uh, you need to set a mark here. I already have set a mark here because I've been into the lens sometimes and uh, but set a mark here and on the uh, zoom ring itself so you know exactly the position of the of this brush here and uh, so it should be easy to to assemble it again <coughs> Also, I use a uh, magnetic, I mean anti-static <laughs> uh, wrist, which you have to use when working with that kind of equipment. Just not to damage anything. Now close the lid, and that's all for for this. Um, the next thing is to <coughs> take off the fifth element here in 
and it's held in place by three screws there, there and also there. In my lens the the holes in the uh, plastic ring where the lens is mounted in well it's a bit worn out so uh, I could if I can find uh, the bigger screws this is 1.4 millimeter and uh, you can go up to the 1.7 millimeter if those screws are too loose or the, the holes are too damaged by unscrewing and screwing in during many times and it can be a little problem especially the one screw here but if I gently took it out and with a oh it comes out here good now <clears throat> also unscrew the uh, the two screws here for the contact and it's it should be okay it's countersunk screws which is smaller than the one in the lens mount here in the lens yeah ring <laughs> for the fifth element now then uh, lift out the uh, you could probably use a small tool like a dentist tool like here and get a grip on here and just lift it out gently it uh, it will make it easier to take out the lens element so you see it in and it can only sit one way now if you do not uh, uh, take off the mount yet but the problem as I described sooner I mean earlier that the uh, the, the flex cables here which is a bit fragile um, take good care of that so that's it <coughs> for now um, then the four screws around the on the mount needs to be taken out uh, since uh, this lens is actually put together by three lens <laughs> lenses uh, I took parts from from uh, two other lenses and put into the third one and it actually works pretty good it's pretty sharp and working actually pretty good but um, maybe I was I was not fully aware of uh, the focus hunting problem so therefore I will make this video and possibly uh, find the solution for it <coughs> so and that's it out with that screw here so all four screws out now uh, have a good grip here on the front um, and just unmount this uh, no <laughs> sorry the mount itself see the the uh, aperture pin I mean this is the pin that is connected to the camera itself and uh, there is another pin in here uh, that goes into the uh, aperture mechanism that moves the blades and so and uh, you have to take really good care of uh, when take it out and put it back in again so gently lift it out there's also some washers thin washers to make the adjustment that we will just see in a few seconds so out with that this is how it looks now there are some spacers or washers whatever name they have in this case there are actually four and there could maybe be 
three or five in your lenses or in your lens and uh, it depending on how the adjustment was in the factory. Now um, there's a small guide hole here in each washers as you can see and the small pin here which is a guide pin uh, so the, the washers can only sit in one position. Now <coughs> we go further into it. The flex uh, cable will just hanging here doing anything more and then we can continue with the back ring here. It's held in place by five screws and uh, before I take it apart just to make it easier to um, assemble it again you can just set a mark here on the back ring and also on the uh, inner body like here. There, there I've already done it because it, it uh, maybe you can get confused by oh okay and there's only five screws we need to take out. You see there are more screws in here but uh, there's only five and the one is here this one and the next one and here and the one here and the last one is over here the four left the four screws that is left is uh, for the for the actually um, assume encoder uh, tape strip circuit board, whatever it calls, flex cable, I will show it. But uh, we take out the five screws here. this one in the last video about this uh, the uh, three screws loose screws on the front I simply forgot to put in the uh, when I assembled the lens I simply forgot to put in the the uh, flex cable from the zoom ring now, I, it will not happen this time. <laughs> now, this ring can be taken off uh, gently. And this is how it looks. Nothing special. And then, uh, the zoom ring itself can be taken off. Not, but not yet. Because we need to... There is a key here. That is the coupling, the connection between the focus ring, I mean the zoom ring itself, and the inner uh, mechanical uh, parts that actually move the, uh, the zoom section. So this key has to be taken out and it also held in place by two screws, which is countersunk. Take good care when uh, loosen this, I mean, take out the, the last screw because uh, so not the, the key will fall into the lens. It could happen. But, you see, take good care of it. And also, <coughs> have a finger, I mean, have a good grip down here on the front so the the lens the front part here will not move and do not press on it it will also move the key so there it comes out and then I can take out the small key here I mean 
possibly. See, so it is. Now, <clears throat> then the focusing, I mean the zoom section can just be moved. And there is no connection to the uh, to the zoom ring, so nothing will happen when I move it. Well, to take out the uh, zoom ring itself, you need to push it all the way over to it stops here. And then you can just lift it out gently. <coughs> That's it. And now we are... <coughs> deeper into the lens and this was the flex cable which I forgot <laughs> to put back in um, but of course <coughs> this time I'll need to take it out again and uh, I use a tweezer where I sprayed uh, some plastic coat uh, rubber and let it dry and it's actually act as a uh, tweezer with sticky rubber ends <coughs> which is quite handy to take out the, uh, the flex cable so by gently very gently move it a little and take out this uh, flex cable looks like there's some dirt on here so it is it probably needs some uh, cleaning also now that's it the next thing is to to actually take off this whole section here, which is plastic, and uh, it's held in place by uh, four screws. And um, <clears throat> just to remember how it should sit, you can just make a mark here on the plastic on the metal the tube here. So you know where the exact position is, but of course it can only sit one way, um, but not to be confused about when assembling it again. But the the trick is that the the flex can only sit here. Now unscrew those four screws. And they are a little short. Okay, where did it go? So and um, before I take this apart, the last screw. You should have a good grip down here because if when you take off this uh, tube here the focusing ring will also be loose so um, and you can by accident um, damage the little brush so we better take it out or just um, I'll just lift off the the rubber grip here and um, because it could give some problems so by taking off the just to not damage anything so I will take off the the brush here and also set a mark uh, somewhere here on the the uh, focusing ring and on the piece of metal here which is the encoder brush for this for the focus ring now off with that tiny screw and you can keep a finger on it so it will not go into the lens Take good care of the small legs here. 
to not uh, bend those. Now <coughs> we are safe to work with the, the rest of the taking off the, the zoom ring, <coughs> the zoom encoder tube or whatever it calls. So off with that screw here and then gently lift off the uh, have a good grip here and on the focusing ring here or the front section and then lift off the uh, this uh, part by wiggle a little and then so <coughs> of the flakes and then take it out so it is I uh, already give it some uh, loop and it, it it works pretty good so now you are in here into the lens and the actual uh, focus ring comes off and now, now you can see the part of the lens which will also include the um, the uh, what you say <coughs> the um, zoom I mean the focus encoder the magnetic uh, strip here magnetic tape and uh, this is the GMR which is the head that reads the information on the magnetic tape and you can see there are some fingerprints and maybe it's me that have do some work with it possibly uh, but it could be very dirty and I can see there is some dirt on it so it needs some care so by um, using a a uh, cotton bud or, or some uh, lens tissue just try to see how it will go I just cut those uh, pick pads in a smaller size because uh, it's very handy to when working with the um, small parts or small lenses <coughs> and um, it's actually easier to work with than the uh, cotton bud and it will not damage anything so by uh, using so like this something like that and some isopropyl alcohol 99% so uh, and it's really good to to clean fragile uh, parts with because it's uh, it's clear and pure I mean, one could also use um, lighter fluid it could also be very handy but I didn't have here didn't have it here so I'll just <coughs> do what I have use what I have so now then where did it go where is the GMR and you, then you can simply wipe here around and it will be yeah it's really dirty and it's also move the um, the zoom I mean the, the focus ring and also take the the rest of the the magnetic strip here I think it will work pretty good And uh, when it's wet, I mean, 
some the head I mean the, the GMR head also needs some some cleaning so one could also um, clean that with the uh, with the some uh, isopropyl alcohol and by uh, add some uh, isopropyl alcohol here on it and then simply move the uh, the uh, focusing motor it will also clean the, the GMR head there is some there's something on here that <coughs> really not need to be there it could uh, do some some maybe noise or whatever so it will not work proper it's like it's just like cleaning and the tape head in an old tape recorder <coughs> because it's almost the same way it works so I think it will be okay for now yeah it seems like it there are some um, there are some I don't know what it is maybe mark, small marks on the magnetic tape so it could probably be the, the, the thing that make their, their not the, I mean the, the focus hunting and when I'm in here I could just clean the uh, with clean the focusing scale from fingerprints and so so it just looks better to see <laughs> so it already looks much better so it's good That's fine. Now we just need to put things back in again. The focusing ring. And uh, don't forget there is a, a uh, spacer here that will. Um, where did it go? should sit in here but um, oh where did it go okay there is a uh, spacer here where the focusing ring is and um, it could be Thicker. There are three types. It could be the thick one or the thin one or the very thin. Uh, you can possibly see it if I lift up here. That was weird. It should be there. Hmm. Well, it is there. But uh, since I loop it uh, yesterday, it will just sit tight. <clears throat> now, put the ring on, the focusing ring on, and take good care of the the flex cables around here. Just put it over, and um, 
just do so. And now it's actually working pretty good. And the uh, magnetic tape looks much better, so I guess it will do some difference. Now I will also just clean the uh, the flex cable end, which looks a bit uh, actually a bit uh, what do you say dirty. So just use a little of the isopropyl alcohol. And uh, could possibly use a finger in here to do the cleaning. It could also be a a problem if the contact is dirty. So now it looks better. So <coughs> put on the the zoom uh, tube here by the window there and <coughs> since I have a mark here which I said in earlier and I have the same mark here so I know exactly where it should go do not uh, press too much on this area here especially not the GMR head so by putting it on, and can be a little tricky. So there. So it is there. Fine. Really good. And since I already have to use some um, Loctite uh, 243 on the screws, I will not do it again. So, I mean, there's no need for that. So, and now it's safe to work with. It will be interesting to see if it if it actually works with the cleaning of those parts. And I guess uh, I mean I hope this is the solution. So that's it, and <laughs> this time I will not forget this this uh, flex cable for the zoom so by putting it in I mean there could be some dirt in the in the connector here which uh, probably is so I could just add a little little uh, isopropyl alcohol on this and if maybe it will help hopefully just add a little and then put in the flex cable gently. So it is there. Now the next thing is that we do not forget to put in <laughs> sometimes when you produce those uh, tutorials it can be a little tricky to remember everything so I'm sorry for for 
sometimes forget things. Well, it's just a case of small parts and working with small parts. So you see the legs are, I mean, out of alignment. Uh, probably you can see it here. But it should be that way. It sits. So by putting in the the brush here, take good care of uh, not damage anything. Could just move it to here. There are more space, and then putting in in and have a good grip here. On the, on the side of it. So, and then screw it in. Well, it, see, it seems like the this part can only sit in one way. So if you look into here, you possibly can see what's happened inside. When moving it, it will slide against the, the circuit board. And it seems like there is something <coughs> out of alignment. The one leg here is, uh, is actually a bit out of alignment. So I will just take it out again and then bend it a little. So, and uh, then bend it more in like it sits that way. Then put it in again. <coughs> oh, I need to load my uh, screwdriver with a this tiny screw. So we'll go that way. Easier to put in. So and then add it. Have to have it in a, in a angle like this. Put it in and then turn it a little yeah it's uh, better so and it seems it's uh, more it's on the better on the in contact on the uh, on the circuit board in there so that's it on with that uh, plate here and then I can uh, add the uh, the zoom ring <coughs> but before doing so uh, I will load screw on my screwdriver for the key so it's ready to put in and then <coughs> the uh, zoom where the, the small notch in here where the key will go into need to be 
take it all the way over here and uh, before you can connect it so by using a screwdriver you can just pull it gently over as long as possible take care of not damage the <laughs> the lens in here and then you can just pull the rest of the front tube out so now it's actually ready to not as long as it, it can but a little back there and keep it tight and then put on the zoom ring here and uh, oh, there is something on here that's some dirt so now it's better <coughs> now put on the zoom ring and it will go in there and just turn it a little and then it cannot fall out as you can see it will only come out when it's over here so there it is put in the key try to catch the the little notch it could be that you have to press on the front element then turn the key I mean the zoom ring a little so now it sits correct and then I can add the one screw here and then I am safe that the key will not fall out and still have a good grip on it and then add another screw on it and then you are almost there so gently tighten it and the zoom is actually working again as it should now the uh, the zoom key I mean the zoom uh, brush will come in and then again I will load my screwdriver with the screw before doing anything <coughs> so there you can see it is and add the uh, the brush for the zoom here and add the screw So, and uh, if you remember I put some marks on here on the zoom ring and on the zoom brush so I know exactly where it should sit when it's correct a sample but if you can see there, uh, there are four legs from the very top one two three the, the the leg number three in the bottom of the curved uh, con of the contact on the uh, circuit board there's also a a um, an area where there is no cover gold plated cover so that is the way it should sit so the the number three legs has no connection when they're when the focus ring I mean the zoom ring is all the way over to 70 so um, so it should sit there and because I set them the small mark in the before I disassemble it I uh, know exactly where it should sit 
when it's correct. Just to mention that. Gently tighten it and put the plate on here. So that was it. Now the next the back tube here needs to be put on. Oh, there's some tape here. Where did it come from? So, <clears throat> and uh, since I have a mark, I know exactly where it should go. Of course, it can only sit one way, so there's, I mean, it can, it cannot sit over here, there, it, well, just the way it, it was designed, that's, that's pretty good. So on with that. And the, the five screws goes in, and then the, the rest of the things is pretty straightforward. <laughs> and I hopefully have a lens that is hunting, I mean do not hunting, or well hunting less than it it was hopefully <laughs> nobody knows yet I do not have the the test equipment or spare parts for that uh, for those uh, lenses so I just do what I can to, to try to fix it so now the um, the mount will actually come off, <coughs> come on, and of course the thin adjustment washers here. And uh, one is uh, a bit worn out, but I mean, it doesn't really matter. It works when it's put in. So all the holes in the thin washers need to be set with the. Uh, guide pin here. So it is there and the last one. Now the uh, the aperture pin that sits on the mount uh, you have to take care of not bending it. And of course uh, the same happen down here. Not to bend this too much. <clears throat> so now we are ready to put this in and um, possibly get things to work. So it has to push all the way on the thin part, it's kind of a, a U form, uh, bended metal. So let's see if we can do this. Being one of the washers is a bit bended, so um, let's see if it will work. And also take good care of the the rubber sealing. So the only thing I need just to catch the hole. <laughs> which can be a problem because the pump washer is a bit out of it's not completely flat so let it go and it should go all the way over here so and then my holes are aligned and the aperture is okay and the ceiling around here, which I need to just press down a little, gently. That looks okay. <clears throat> then I can put in my, my different screws on the mount. <laughs> it's not the case in your lens, but I didn't have any other screws, so I need to modify them. 
So, but it worked pretty good. And hopefully it will work much better. And there. The last screw goes in and then the the back lens element and the contact and the rubber grip and so on and then we are almost there. So um, take care of uh, when taking up the flex cable and on the contact here it's better to when putting up on one side and then lift it over the other side and uh, do not draw I mean do not pull much, too much in the, uh, the flex it's a bit fragile so the two screws on the contact part there here. and then the lens element itself there are some scratch on this lens element in here but it, it doesn't seem to be on the picture at all so I don't care about it I'll put on the lens by pushing the uh, aperture pin here a little you can easily uh, put in the lens element. There's no need to press too much on it. It could damage something. So this screw is a bit loose but uh, it doesn't really matter because when it sits on the camera it cannot fall out. So gently tighten it, not too much, since it's plastic. So there it is. Oh. Now on with the, uh, the focus rubber grip and there is a slope in one end here. And uh, it should face towards the camera. So. And here it comes on. Looks fine all the way around. Mm -hmm. And it goes pretty good. The same is with the uh, zoom rubber grip. There's also a slope, and uh, it has to face towards the camera. grips here are in okay condition they are a bit sometimes sticky but one can buy them on the uh, on the internet some some internet shops have them so as I see it so now things are actually working pretty good so now the test for see how it will go. So I put it on my Nikon D3S to see if it will work good or not so good. And uh, the surface I have to focus on is not that good. So, but it works. And if I look out the window with the cloudy, it, it is a pretty, pretty hard to focus on. But uh, I think it's much better than the, uh, and it's, yeah, it's absolute, it's working. So <clears throat> that's what's uh, 
actually all for for now for me maybe you can use some of the info in this uh, video <clears throat> maybe it will work or and maybe not um, so it's all for now but uh, have a good time bye bye oh <laughs>